Hi, it's Lindsay. So I'm back with part three of the used books. And um, I had parts one and two yesterday and those books are in my shop now. These ones are in my shop. I didn't have enough time to get to all of them yesterday. These are all flower and garden books. So let's get right into it. I am obsessed with this little um, garden plants pocket guide over 2000 species, over 500 color illustrations. It is so cute in size. Um, there's little dust jacket on it. And I love how all of these pages have all these little pictures and information. And there's a lot of pages in here, 174 pages. And this is a 1981 reprinted in 87. But these are amazing to slip into pockets and things like that. Do collaging in your junk journal. So this one is Garden Plants. And then I picked up Wildflower Perennials for Your Garden, a detailed guide to years of bloom from America's native heritage. And what I like about this is the black and white drawings. There's a lot of them, and I think that they are amazing for junk journals. I like to say um, when you're working with so many different patterns and colors, it's really nice to throw in black and white accents. I just think it's really classy and it kind of screams for attention itself because of all the other busyness stuff going on. So beautiful, beautiful drawings, a ton of them in here. This is 1976 reprinted in 96, 292 pages. So this is definitely a little bit unique. I would like to keep this one for myself, but I can't keep all of them. So you guys get it. I got a lot of rose books and this one's called Old Roses and English Roses. Not only is the cover absolutely gorgeous and you could use the cover, cut it out and make tags or something with that, um, the images are to die for. So this is a 1992. And look at the roses. Oh my word. So beautiful. I love roses. They are my favorite flower. So maybe I'm partial. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite flower is. I adore roses, especially red roses. All right. Um, 200 and about 220 pages. These back pages look like somebody spilled coffee on them or they got wet. But they're only um, like the index. So there is that one. And then I, I have this book and I may have even sold a copy before. I don't know. I know I sold the Taylor's Guide to Annuals, but I found the Taylor's Guide to Perennials and I have this specific one and I've already used it. I love it. And let me show you why. You have the colored ones here that have a drawing plus a photo and information on them. And you have a ton of that at the beginning. You just have some information on. Here's a little post-it note from somebody. But then in the back, and I think this might be my favorite part, um, huh, can use these as ephemera, is the Encyclopedia of Perennials. And I love just the drawings and the information. I think it's so simple, but so botanical. And I've used these in journals already, and I love it. So I wanted to pick up a copy for you guys. This has well, 478 pages. So there's a ton here. And it is in 1961. So there's that one. I love books from the 60s. So this was interesting. Knowledge Through Color, A Bantam Nature Guide, Flowers of the World by Sandra Holmes, 180 photographs. And it's just a paper, like a paperback book that you would expect, like a paperback novel. But it has all of these vintage um, floral photographs in it. And I just love the color tones. Definitely think it's beautiful. Um, I believe this is the 60s as well. It might be the 70s. Let me see. I'm getting pretty good at telling just by looking at it. 74. Yeah. What decade it's from. Simon and Shusters <laughs> Guide to Orchids. 250 color photos. And it's just another nature guide. Have information and just all different pictures of orchids. These are great for journal cards. You just cut them out, back them with coffee dyed paper or scrapbook paper, and you have beautiful journal cards. And what I like to do sometimes when I'm thinking about junk journals, but I know I need to take a break and I'm watching TV or something, is I just grab a book and a pair of scissors. Or if I'm talking to, my mother-in-law comes over a lot and we just chat and hang out and visit, and sometimes my hands wanna be busy. So I grab a book and a pair of scissors and I just start cutting. So you would just start ripping out pages and cutting 
cutting, cutting until you retired and you have a whole pile of floral images ready to go and ready to tuck into Happy Mail as well. So copyright 1989 and uh, about 250 pages. This one I own as well, and I was so excited to find a copy for you. This is Taylor's Guide to Ground Covers, Vines, and Grasses, and I do own this one. And what I love about it is it's pretty much just like, I mean, there's some flowers, but it's mostly just like the ground cover. So it's a lot of green, a lot of leaves, and I think um, they're really nice to add to botanical journals. Um, so I just really like that, the ground cover flowers. I've always just wanted to kind of have here's grasses. So these go really well with all sorts of nature botanical journals. And then again, in the back, you have your lovely um, illustration drawings and charts and stuff like that. So I, like I said, I own this one and there's a copy for you guys. I found McCall's garden book that I was tempted to keep because look at that thing. You could turn it into not only a beautiful junk journal, but there's so much information and I love the color scheme in this. Um, this is the 60s, 1968, but so much in here. A lot of pages that are great. What's great with these text pages, they're great to sometimes stick into a junk journal. Like if you're, um, I like to pay attention to the content on worded pages. Like, I don't want to just, I don't, I don't like to just take novels and use pages unless I know what the content is. So I like this. Landscaping begins with a plan. Sloping sites need special treatment. McCall's garden book. So this works great in a garden journal where you just want some text pages, but you want it themed. It's also great to make like um, envelopes and things like that with. But there is a lot of illustration in this book. A lot. And I love, just love it. So again, this one is humongous, over 500 pages. So, and it's vintage. I'm, yeah, we said it was the 60s. And then we have the Natural Shade Garden. Look at that beautiful cover for making a journal. I am almost done with a coffee table size junk journal that I'll be doing a video on. You should see it this week or next week at the latest probably um, in a few days. And I'm gonna show you some things that I did to make the pages big enough to do this size of a junk journal. I am really liking how it's turning out. So keep all of those, look at these. Okay, here's why I bought this for you guys. You have full borderless color pages. So like I've said many, many times before, I like to think of books as paper pads, like the paper pads that you buy at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, things like that. And look, it's exactly like that. You fold it in half, you have a borderless page and there are a lot of them in here. So I really thought that that was nice. There's no border, just these, um, there are a lot of those full page floral. And then these, you just cut them out. You have six journal cards just on this one page. And um, I love end papers. I love end papers and I love using these pages. So 280 pages, definitely so much to use in here. You can use the cover, you can use the, it's like dirty on the inside, um, 92. So that's beautiful. A to Z of popular garden plants. This, this end paper is very similar to one I have that I used in a journal. I don't think it's the same. I don't own this book, I don't think, but I think it's the same time period. I'm gonna guess 60s, no, I'm so off. 1990, 1985. But look at all these floral pictures. I liked all the different sizes, so that's nice for, I just see journal cards galore, honestly. And of course, pages and journals, but look at those. So pretty. Love the end paper as well. So over 250 pages in this one. This one I almost kept. <laughs> I say that all the time. A book of lilies. Look at this, you guys. Not only do you have an incredible white, like hardback canvas cover to make a journal with, you have a beautiful yellow end paper. I love this shade of yellow. Um, this is from 1988, but you have all of these full page lily illustrations. These are not photos, they are illustrations, nature illustrations, botanical illustrations, and look at how many journals you could make. If you wanted to do a lily theme for the spring, or if you just wanted to put them in your botanical journals, they are so beautiful. 
So, um, doesn't have page numbers, but there's a lot in here. That's how thick it is. This one, whoop, this one's called Climbing Roses. And you have a really nice um, light yellow canvas book to make a journal with, a cover. And then it's just all different rose images. These are all climbing roses and beautiful, beautiful illustrations here from 1998. And then we have the National Arbitarium book about standing garden plants. I might not have pronounced that right, but we have a map here. And this is 1990 and lots of beautiful like trees and bushes and plants so much information um i like to cut out pieces of the information and also put them in the journal so you have little snippets of information beautiful beautiful images in this one and there's a ton of pages uh to over 280 pages so there is that one and then also beautiful green cover this might be really worn and falling off the dust jacket but this cover is very similar to the one I'm using for a coffee table junk journal. And what, I'll go more into that. I won't take up your time now, but I'll go into more of that later. So here's a book on perennials. The cover's beautiful, but um, bright, bright colors. Look at those beautiful, bright colors. So many. I just love the color tones. I love flowers. So beautiful, beautiful. So many. Over 200 pages, uh, A to Z of perennials from the early 90s. These are perfect for cutting out to make bookmarks. And then there's lots and lots of beautiful floral images. So that is definitely a seal. Antique Roses for the South. Look at that cover. And then look at the end paper. Oh my goodness, I wish you could feel it too. It's got so much texture. Uh, 1990. This is an incredible book. It is so beautiful. And I probably should have kept it, but I do have some rose books. So I'm trying to use up the ones I have. I have limited space and I've already over, over. Here's another end paper. Too many books. Can't fit it enough. So beautiful, beautiful images. And there's a lot of pages in this one as well, about 200. And then this one is Shrub Roses. It's very much like this Climbing Roses. Same um, type of book here, but it's all Shrub Roses. So, so beautiful. And then what a cute little book here, all about miniature roses. And this one is kind of unique. So you have a beautiful blue cover that you can use to make a junk journal. And then this is a really neat piece of ephemera. And this is notes for the first edition of it and things they needed to fix throughout the book. So I think that's really cool. I'm going to leave that in there. And I believe this is from 1966. And there's images and text. Really, really pretty. Nice vintage vintage images to use look at that cute little girl so definitely something you will want to add i want to add it to my collection but i have enough this is the gardening handbook from the 50s 52 i love the patina on these pages i am so tempted to keep this for myself so tempted you guys but look at how pretty just so so vintage looking the patina is incredible so over 140 pages in that and then you definitely would want to use this cover gorgeous gorgeous cover only a couple left the illustrated encyclopedia of flowering plants over 400 illustrations and again so many beautiful beautiful flower images uh 352 pages and this is from 82 reprinted in 93 so there's that one and then the Gardener's Encyclopedia of Bulbs. Lots of really, really pretty. All of these, you can cut them all out for collaging. Got beautiful backgrounds. You can use this to um, 
Like you could take a piece of lined paper and you could cut tags out of it and then back them with this. So you have a really pretty floral ground cover on the back and then you have a lined tag on the other side or journal card. So much to do with it. Uh, 1988 and about 150 pages in this one. There's two left. There's 100 Desert Wildflowers of the Southwest. I like this one a lot. You already have that line where you could fold it in half or make journal cards out of it. There's 100 different um, Southwestern flowers in this one. 1989. It's just like a little booklet. And the last one is the Reader's Digest Complete Book of the Garden. I bought two of these and I kept one for myself. Actually, this isn't the last one. I have one more after this. I kept um, one for myself because I liked it so much and I bought one for you guys. And the reason why I loved it so much are all of these illustrations and they're in pastel colors. So I just think it is really pretty. Just really, really pretty pastel illustrations throughout. So I definitely kept one for myself and then I got one for you guys. There is so much in this book. There's over 800, there's almost 900 pages in this book. So that's definitely something that you would want. And then the last one, I actually have eight of these. Yes, eight. I don't know why they had eight of them. I don't know if somebody had maybe a class they were teaching or whatever, but I picked up all of them, Gardening Essentials, and they just have all sorts of really neat items that you can cut out, you can collage. These pages are great for just folding in half and putting in journals as well. So I have like eight of these, so you can get one for yourself and one for a friend for like Happy Mail or two copies so that you don't have to, when you use a page, you know that you still have another one to use or eight of you can get one. I love the berries. So there's quite a few pages in here as well, almost 200 and I have eight of those. So that's all of them. Uh, just check out my shop link below. And if you go to the used book and magazine section, that's where you will find all of these. And then any of the ones that hadn't sold from before are in there as well. I'll see you all in the next video. I love each and every one of you.